Nvidia is giving us more of the same graphics cards, YouTube's giving us less ads, and AMD's giving you a lot more frames. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. Let's jump on into talking about how Nvidia fixed the CPU bug that was popping up in their drivers. We talked about this in a previous episode of Hot News. They said that they were going to fix it. The hot fix driver for this is now out. So if you are on 531.18, update your drivers to the latest 531.26 because there was a 10% performance bug that was popping up in these drivers that were affecting the CPUs, making NV container run a little bit higher percentage than it should have, but now it's been resolved, but no resolving the confusion, and that is the RTX 3060. In a similar way to what they did with the GTX 1060 way back in the day where I think we got like six or seven different versions. There was the 1066 gig, the 1063 gig, there was a 1065 gig, but then there was a 1066 gig that was based on a different core, and then there was another one with different memory. It was a whole weird situation and it looks like we're going down the same route with one of the more popular RTX cards and it does look like it's going to be like the original because the original one was an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte then they came out with a light hash rate edition then they came out with an 8 gigabyte version but now they're coming out back with a 12 gigabyte version but it's going to have GDDR6X instead of GDDR6 and it's going to be based on the GA104 core instead of the GA106 and it's not quite clear if this is going to make its way to the US market or which markets it's going to hit up, but that increase to GDDR6X could potentially mean it's 36% faster in memory bandwidth, but it could also mean that it's just an engineering sample that was put out and they're not actually going to bring it to retail because of the details that we're getting surrounding it. But in case you want to be confused, absolutely pick Nvidia. And in case you want to play Hogwarts Legacy, don't pick a legacy console. The PlayStation 4 and Xbox One consoles are getting their game delayed yet again. It was supposed to be released on April 4th, but now has been delayed until until May 5th in order to iron out some of the bugs and kinks that are going on in the video game. And after playing it on PC, I can firmly say I wish they would have done that for PC because the launch experience was not great, even after several updates. Still very buggy and stuttering, even on an RTX 4080. But you know who is a legacy person here at UFD Tech? Reese. Does that mean I'm going to deprecate him soon? Thanks, Legacy Reese. You know what else is a legacy? It's just the word of the day. YouTube getting rid of legacy ads. They want to give you less ads here on the experience, specifically getting rid of these little overlay ads. They're saying that they're part of their legacy ad format and they're going to be disappearing on April 6th. Coincidentally, that's also the day that the 7800X3D is launching. Coincidence? I'll let you judge. YouTube saying that the ads are disruptive for viewers, that they want to come up with a different way of doing it, which is the way that they have it, minus that. So in case you want less ads, not fewer, mind you, uh, it shouldn't affect the creators at all from what YouTube's saying. You're gonna make about the same amount of money as you were before. It's just gonna be different. But Microsoft's choosing to make a little bit less money when it comes to Outlook. They're making it free on Mac instead of being part of a Microsoft 365 subscription or an office purchase and actually making it so that people on Mac West get access to this email client as an alternative to whatever is provided by Apple themselves or third party ones that you can download. A lot of this seems to be a change of pace that Microsoft's been moving forward with lately, especially with them announcing the Windows 11 official support for parallels to bring that over to Apple Silicon chips. We've seen some changes going on with their dev channels to make it so that they can bring out Canary builds for Windows 12. And now they're making it so that you can have Outlook on Mac for free. It does seem like Microsoft should shifting strategies just a little bit. It's gonna be intriguing to see where they take it from here. But one of the things Microsoft did with Windows 11 was make it so that you had to have a TPM chip in order to actually use the operating system, which puts a lot of older hardware out in the lurch, especially things that were only released five, six years ago. They didn't have a TPM module that met the specifications that Microsoft wanted. But bad news, it turns out that there might be a severe set of vulnerabilities in TPM 2.0, which happens to be in billions of devices that could potentially make it so that there's a bad actor threat. This is coming out of Quark's Labs, who's been reporting on the two major vulnerabilities in TPM 2.0. The vulnerabilities have to do with out-of-bounds writes and reads, making it susceptible to malicious hardware being verified by the TPM and then making it so that your system is not 
being trusted platformed. It's it's untrusted and bad. We'll keep you updated if there's any more details that are going to come out with the TPM vulnerability as they happen. And as it happens right now, AMD seems to be regretting their pricing strategy on their GPUs because the price cut for the RX 7900 XT appears to be more permanent and then also appears to actually be even more discounted than you think it is. Turns out that AMD is deciding to cut the price of the 7900 XT down to 800 pounds in the UK and $800 in the US. We've already seen a GPU hit this price point on Newegg. The ASRock Phantom Gaming has been $800 for a little while, but AMD saying that these GPUs should be $800 at least for the next few months. But it gets even more discounted than that because AMD just announced their brand new game bundles that are going to apply to RX 6000 and 7000 series GPUs. And that means you can get The Last of Us Part 1 video game for free when you pick up the 7900 XT or XTX. The reason that's significant, it does seem like AMD is trying to move these models here because when it came to their CPU bundle with Star Wars Jedi Survivor, that applies for Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, except the brand new X3D chip. So AMD excluded the things that they believe are the new hotness and that should be selling really well from their CPU bundles. But when it comes to the GPUs, it looks like the sales aren't as hot as they want them to be. And so they're trying to incentivize it by giving you a free Vigi game. Does that entice you to pick up an AMD GPU? Is this enough? $800 plus The Last of Us. Would you rather get that or an RTX 4070 Ti, which is likely going to be roughly the same price point, but not the game bundled included with it? Let me know your preferences, how you view this. Is AMD doing this from a place of strength, weakness? I want to hear from you down below in the comments, but a place of strength for AMD has been their FSR up resolution technology, which makes it so that your games run faster and look roughly the same. And it turns out we should be getting an FSR 3.0 sneak peek at GDC 2023, which is going to be taking place on Thursday, March 23rd. AMD saying that this session will include an exciting sneak peek of new Fidelity FX technologies that will be available soon. This is coming after the announcement that AMD had at CES, saying that FSR 3 should be coming out this year and it should be up to two times better performance than FSR 2.0, which is already probably one of people's most preferred upscalers, even beating out things like DLSS 2. Then if you add in, you're getting more frames with FSR 3, but you can also use things like NVIDIA's frame insertion technology, like on Spider-Man. Well, then you get the best of both worlds. You get the better upscaler with the good frame insertion based on NVIDIA's technology. It looks to be like this is going to be a good time to just have your GPU get better without you having to buy a new one. The 6700 XT looks like it's going to age really well thanks to FSR 3, AMD making that happen. Likely going to be a big deal. I'm excited to see what's coming of that when it does happen on March 23rd. But speaking of marches, I'm going to march on out of here because this episode's over. See you for more hot news tomorrow, my friends.